Hi, welcome to The Difference Makers. Today's guest is Bob Kaufman. He's a neural feedback therapist and an expert in critical thinking skills. We're going to be learning how to train the brain for success. Stay tuned. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Lynn Sanders, your host at The Difference Makers, where it's our mission to empower, inspire, and motivate you, our difference makers, to make a bigger difference by tapping into your highest potential through telling your stories strategically. Let me tell you a little bit more about our guest, Bob Kaufman, today. Bob was trained as a psychotherapist, and he's had 35 years of experience. He began his career uh, actually at a large pharmaceutical company where he was the director of employee counseling. As he solved personal and family problems for employees, he was soon asked to begin his own business to help other people. So in 1980, Bob founded, along with a partner, a company called Human Effectiveness, which provided employee assistance counseling, both nationally and business counseling. They sold that business in 1995 and then Bob founded the American Institute of Learning and Cognitive Development, Inc. That later became Critical Thinking for Success. And that's his company name right now. So, Bob, welcome to The Difference Makers. I am so glad to have you here. Can you say hello I'm, to your guests? I'm excited about being here. It's great. And can you tell us where you're coming from? Because we have people from all over who will be listening to you. Well, I have offices in Deerfield, Illinois, and it, down in Chicago on Ohio Street in, in the city of Chicago. That's true. And, you know, I was referred to, Bob, to a, a mutual friend, and she had told me that you are a neurofeedback therapist, as well as someone who could help people with their critical thinking skills. So first, as I mentioned to you earlier, I don't think everyone knows what a neurofeedback specialist is. Can you explain what you do? Sure. Neurofeedback is an extension of biofeedback. It's a for form of biofeedback. And the brain is able to learn how to relegate, uh, regulate itself with information back to it. And there are different forms of neurofeedback. The form that I use uses electrical signals to give the brain information so that it can adjust itself. Uh, the brain is very smart. It's been around for a long time. It can do marvelous things. And this is just a tool to help it do that. So could it's, you explain exactly how does it work? What, what does it mean if someone has a neural feedback session with you? Well, I, I'm, I will explain the kind that I use. There are several kinds. There's others that use uh, auditory feedback and uh, visual feedback. Mine uses electrical feedback. So I put an ear clip on each ear, one's a ground and one's a reference, and then I have two active electrodes. And it these electrodes will read the frequencies and amplitude at each of the sites I place it on. And I'm a virtual map of the brain where I'm able to find out uh, what frequencies are functioning at those sites, how much uh, electrical activity is occurring, how much variation there is in uh, frequencies and in, in the electrical activity. And from that, I can pretty much get an idea of what's happening with the brain. And oftentimes the brain will get traumatized in different ways that can throw it off and keep it from functioning as well. And what is the benefit of having neurofeedback therapy? Well, just like the body does really well when it's in balance with temperature and blood pressure and things like that. Well, the brain does really well when it has a nice balance also. And you're able to access the different brain waves needed for different activities. You don't want a really fast brain when you're trying to sleep. And you don't want a really slow brain when you're trying to solve a mathematical problem. 
That's true. And oftentimes people's brains can get stuck. What's been happening lately, there's been a lot of communication around concussions. And concussions, usually when the person gets a concussion, the brain tends to slow down. I see. And it, as it heals, it tends to speed back up, but frequently it doesn't. In a good percentage of times, the brain stays in that really slow mode and the person experiences all kinds of symptoms like dizziness or headaches or memory difficulties or depression or anxiety, uh, eyesight problems, uh, distraction, inability to focus. All those kind of things can come from a brain being injured. And, and I also, would imagine it could happen from other things as well, right, Bob? I and mean, you could have those kinds of problems. Yeah. yeah, people will, emotional trauma can affect the brain. Uh, Post-traumatic stress is, is certainly the brain having uh, problems uh, regulating the, its sensitivity to threat. So, uh, so people, you're, go ahead, I was trying to ask you. Your work actually helps a wide range of people. And as we talked earlier, it sounds like your work could help almost anyone because we're all subject to stress, which could affect our brain, right? Absolutely. The, the neural feedback can help optimize the brain, even for people who aren't having significant problems. A lot of professional athletes, particularly golfers, are using neural feedback now because it helps them be more resilient and able to focus for a longer period of time. And golfers have to focus for five, six hours, and if they lose focus, wow. they can lose a lot of money. That's so, true. so a lot of them are starting to use neural feedback to stay focused. Excellent. I, tell I us about, a, go ahead, I'm sorry. I work, I work with a lot of veterans. I work with a lot of athletes, a lot of former NFL and NHL athletes and college and high school and then just people who fall off bicycles or horses or fall, fall down steps i work with a lot of people who have um what we call chemo brain they've gone through chemotherapy and they will experience their brain slowing down from it or anesthesia um, i work with a number of children who've had problems during labor uh, where they're they've had anoxia or where there's been forceps used and the child's gotten a head injury from right right around the time they're coming into this world Isn't that so something? things like that now what about you know you said to me also earlier that beyond the neural feedback you were you've been specially trained for a second uh, you've been specially trained in helping people build their critical thinking skills for success um, right. And I'd like you to, to identify what you do that's different because there are lots of doctors and there are lots of, as, as you were mentioning, different types of neural feedback therapists. So what is it all about? What, what are critical thinking skills? Uh, critical thinking skills are the basic operating system of the brain. These are skills that we learn, start developing uh, as soon as we're born. Children don't have these skills. They have the potential for the development of these skills. Children, if you notice how much children sleep, it's because they're taking so much information in and they're building templates and programming their brain. So if these skills are inefficient, it makes it harder for the person to think at higher levels. So lots of ex problems show up. I know I know you wouldn't ever have this happen, Lynn, or Roland wouldn't, but some people procrastinate. That's a sign of inefficient thinking skills. People get lost. They feel overwhelmed. They have trouble delegating, have trouble planning. All of these are signs of inefficient thinking skills. And I got, when I, when I got trained in neurofeedback, the, guy, the person who trained me was quite a brilliant man. He recommended I, that I look into basic thinking skills. He didn't train those, but he thought it would be important combination with the neural feedback. 
-hmm. So I got trained here in the States in it and then trained in Australia in these basic skills. And I focus on 14 basic skills that the brain uses in order to successfully deal with the world. And it's you, this is, these are useful in everything in relationship, in school, in business, in sports. And I even have worked with the Marine Corps to help them recognize IEDs and to improve marksmanship without going to the rifle range. So all of these skills are things we take for granted, but now cognitive sciences have identified them and now are starting to explore how if you improve these skills, higher level skills improve as well. Would you be able to identify those 14 for us? Do you have a, a list handy? Oh, I, I've, I've worked with them so long. Yeah, a shape okay. recognition is a very important skill, knowing where something ends and another thing begins in the world. When you take information into your eyes, uh, you're just getting light frequencies. And then the brain uh, builds templates of the different shapes that the light's coming from. And so the, the clearer the templates and the more precise they are, the better we're able to recognize things in the world. Direction and orientation is another important skill, knowing where we are in the world. And it has a lot of important functions. It helps us have confidence in our relationships. It helps us be able to visualize. It even helps us in our relationship to time. Then uh, classification and categorization, two closely related skills that help us organize things. Uh, field discrimination, which helps us find things. We're able to look at all kinds of stimuli out there and find the what we're looking for. Environmental awareness, being able to be aware of the environment around us and how it functions. Analysis, being able to break things down and understand them at a deep level. Synthesis, which is to be able to bring things back together. Wow. Uh, abstract sequencing, the ability to visualize things into the future. Concrete sequencing is being able to learn by getting your hands on things and beginning to look at how do they function by playing with them. Uh, uh, pattern recognition, looking at patterns in the world uh, so that you can predict things well. Uh, working memory, which lasts for a few minutes or even less than a few minutes, is sort of like the RAM of the brain. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, tracking, being able to follow things. Originally, it was be able to track animals, but now it's tracking lines of text, tracking conversations, and so forth. And then the last one is what I, I call integrated intelligence. It is like the, the skill that brings all these other skills to bear in the world. So it is really the strategic planning and execution skill. Wow. So That's something we all can benefit from, right. all of these. So I would like to, you know, there's so much that you have to offer, Bob. I, I said that I would really love to do a series, at least another interview with you, because I don't want to uh, make it really long. But you, you have so much to share. And you, you told me you've been working on this since 1990, although beforehand you had 35 years of experience in in social service, social work, and you've also been a licensed therapist, and you say you're bringing a wealth of skills to people. Um, but I always also enjoy asking guests, how do they get to where they are right now? And you have a you have a great story to share of overcoming the most extreme challenges, I think, to now to go out and share your gifts with the world and make this world a better place and helping people improve their brain skills. Uh, can you give us a, um, a synopsis of you know, how you got to where you are right now? Well, I, I, I grew up on a farm and it was a pretty stoic family. I, we weren't terribly in touch with our feelings. And it, for me, it was just a lot safer not to be in touch with my feelings. It wasn't mm -hmm. very pleasant. Mm -hmm. In fact, my dad had told me, 
Enjoy it as a kid because it's miserable as an adult. Oh my gosh, what terrible programming. <laughs> right, and I thought I was already miserable. I thought, oh, oh it, no. gets, it gets worse than this. Anyway, uh, I had a number of tragedies in my life. Um, tragedy was, uh, um, I lost my wife, oh, first wife and daughter, somebody arsed in my home and they, um, they died a few days later. Now, what I had learned a lot from that was my daughter, um, because I had shut down my feelings so much, my daughter was the first person I could feel I loved. Wow. And when I, when I, um, was at the hospital as they were dying, she was eight at the time, um, my arms started aching and um, I was, uh, just didn't know what to do. And after they passed away, I, I spent time uh, looking for who killed them. And the, uh, the- It's so unbelievable, it's so, right. so tragic, go ahead. And I ended up, the police weren't terribly helpful, so I ended up using two psychics because I didn't believe in psychics to find out. And I figured if they both, they were both police consultants, I thought if they both ended up getting the, the person, then I'd believe it, otherwise I wouldn't believe it. Well, they both came up with the same person. And um, I told the second person who told me who it was, that I didn't know what I was going to do with the information, but she knew I was lying because I was going to go take care of this person. Mm -hmm. And she said, told me my wife and daughter were at peace and they didn't need me to avenge them. And that if I would um, do it, it would destroy me. So I took it seriously. And then she said, my daughter was an old soul who came to teach and her teaching was finished and she would have died that year anyway. And I didn't know what that meant, but later on, I was telling a friend of mine about my arms aching. They had been aching for close to two years after the after the being at the hospital. And um, the uh, as I he he told me to rock pretend I was rocking my daughter, and I was had an image of rocking her. And as I was rocking her, she. Um, uh, suddenly was a little boy. As I finished rocking her, my arms got better, feel, feel, felt a little bit better, and in fact, felt a whole lot better. And then suddenly I was rocking a little boy and realized it was me. Wow. And, and that I didn't, I hated me, I did not like me, but I loved my daughter. And so she, was, she was teaching you to love yourself right at that moment, wasn't she, Bob? Right. What happened was when I realized, I made a commitment to love myself at that point and realized what this woman had told me about my daughter being a teacher. Because when she came into the world, she taught me to love. And when she left, she created such a space that she taught me to love myself. And that's been my purpose ever since, is teaching people to love themselves. Beautiful. And most, most people, I tell them, if they're going to love me the way they love themselves, I wouldn't want to be anywhere around them. But oh, no. they treat me a lot better than they treat themselves. So uh, yeah, that's, that's been my that's purpose. So that's been my purpose in life for thirty some years now. So, and I use the neural feedback. I use the mental performance training, the critical thinking skill development, as a way of helping people appreciate themselves, love themselves more, and be more effective in this world. Wow, I mean, that's something that we all can benefit from. You know, um, wow, we're so grateful to have met you because you've been helping our family. And I'd also like to, just so you know, I'd like to have an experience in neurofeedback experience because what you're saying is we all can benefit, whether we've had a head injury or stroke or post-traumatic stress syndrome or just stress, it's going to affect us. And ultimately what you're doing is helping the brain right, reorient itself and then you're teaching critical thinking skills, which ultimately helps us be the best we can be. I'm wondering if you could share a few examples of the, you don't have to say any names, but of, of the benefits that people have received as one of the clients who have come to you, because I think the stories are what people remember most. And, and your story is so powerful where you 
you took the worst kind of situation or you were dealt with it and you learned the, the higher lesson and, and now are giving of yourself so generously. Um, what are some of the other stories of people who have turned their lives around or benefited through your program? Well, I just, I just was on a phone call with a young uh, retired Marine who came back from Iraq and um, had experienced a head injury from an IED explosion. And the, the uh, VA had really told him he was just a malingerer, not that he had no head injury. But when I mapped him, it was clearly he had a head injury and he was non-functioning. He was dizzy. He couldn't hardly talk. He shuffled like a 90 year old man. He was depressed. He was anxious. And his one goal he told me was to be able to fish again and he couldn't even go fishing. Well, within 10 sessions, all those symptoms were gone. And uh, he's out in Colorado now in, going to college um, in uh, photography and, and art at this point. Oh, that's wonderful. And, and then uh, just um, people who've had um, business difficulties where they're very successful. I helped a couple in New York establish a fashion industry business. They, they were told that they couldn't do it uh, because it was too competitive, but their first year of business, they were at 2 million in sales. By the third year, 10 million. Um, worked with a woman who uh, I had to almost threaten to get her to start her business. Five years later, it was at 48 million in sales and so wow. forth. Oh my gosh. And, and the Marines, we were able to help them recognize the IEDs more successfully. And I even helped the uh, pistol and rifle team from Hawaii uh, win first place in against all the other rifle teams from around the Pacific Rim. Uh, uh, and they were all, their only one guy who'd shot competition before the rest were rookies. And they, the Hawaii team hadn't won a gold medal in 33 years. So wow. they, they were, were impressed with the training. Well, you know, I, I think it was, it's so fascinating how people's lives can turn around. Can you give us, I know we just have a little bit of time. We started two minutes late. So I wanted to go just a couple minutes beyond our 30 minute time. Just if you could give us an idea when someone first comes to you, what do you do? to help them get started on the pathway of helping their brain train for success? What, is, what does it mean to have a, an assessment? How do you work with people? And how do you know, or can you ever determine how many treatments someone would need to have? Well, it's, it, that last one is hard to predict. We, I find that it's pretty rapid for most people. The beginning is, is really my finding out what people want out of coming to see if there is a right fit. I don't, I don't want to work with people that where, you know, there isn't a right fit between us. And so that's a big a beginning part. And then it, from what they're, what they're telling me their symptoms are, or their problems are, we, we can determine, whether neurofeedback is going to be most useful or whether the cognitive training is going to be most useful or a combination of the two. I had a young man come to me and I, for asking for cognitive treat, uh, a training, and when I mapped, when I uh, assessed him, we did a, a, a assessment of the 14 skills, there were big differences between his, what we call performance and ability on that test. And that often is a sign of head injury. So I ended up also doing neurofeedback with him and very quickly um, he improved dramatically. When he had first came in, he was depressed and suicidal. And within 10 sessions, the, his depression was lifted. He was feeling so much better. All kinds of things were happening for him. And he had had anoxia during uh, his, the labor that he was in, and it had been affecting him ever since he was little. Wow. Now, Roland has been um, 
monitoring our comment tracker. And I want to turn to Roland for a moment here because he has some feedback for us. Roland, can you um, show yourself on camera for a moment? And let us know what, what we're hearing from our audience. Yes, uh, Anna Giannone is prolifically commenting on the recording. First of all, she says, you look beautiful today, Lynn. Oh, Anna, thank and, you. But it's she great says, to have you here. But the discussion is very interesting. She commented, I love the psychic perspective. And then she also says, yes, I like that. The right fit for very important. Then change can happen. The right so, fit for uh, what? Was that, um, oh, and the right fit for whether it's neurofeedback or critical thinking? Right, therapy. Well, and also, I think the right fit between myself and the, that person, uh, I don't assume that people are all going to want to work with me, and I don't assume I'm going to want to work with them. Because uh, some of the work, especially the cognitive training, requires a commitment to do daily exercises. And if they don't want to do that, you know, I don't want to waste their time or money, or and I don't want to waste my time. So right. it's it's really that we feel like we are committed to each other and can make a that we're going to make a difference. That's that's very important what you just said because I think otherwise people might believe that you just you just put some electrodes on someone's scalp and it's instant magic, but people have to work at at what you teach them. Well, to the do. neurofeedback sometimes there is an instant magic with that. Really? I mean, people are often shocked by how much better they feel quickly, and uh, they said. It couldn't happen this fast, but it can. Um, the brain responds very quickly to the neurofeedback. The cognitive training requires more effort. The neurofeedback is usually the person's just being there relaxing. I see. So it depends on what they're working on as right. far as the results that they'll find. Right. You know, we're, we're running out of time. So I want to ask you before we close, everyone, if, you, um, if you're listening now live, we're going to invite you, if you would like to meet Bob, after we um, stop the recording, we're going to uh, send you a link through this, um, through the YouTube channel, and you're going to be able to join us live. In the meanwhile, um, you can look for Bob online at you can, uh, Critical Thinking for Success. Is that correct, Bob? CriticalThinkingForSuccess.com. And Bob is even offering a free ebook on, um, why don't you explain, on helping people with is it concussions? Yeah, it's information on, on concussions and the how, how you can, the symptoms that it can represent and how you can improve them. That's helpful. So Bob, if we were to say a last closing statement, if you wanted to kind of summarize, what would be the most important thing people would need to know about neurofeedback therapy and critical thinking skills for success. What would you want to tell them or encourage them to do? Well, I think that uh, being able to look at what they want to accomplish and what they're not able to accomplish, what happens is that the brain tends to get used to things as they are and what's familiar. And so it takes a little bit to get the brain to go into the unfamiliar because the safety side of the brain thinks anything unfamiliar could kill me, even if it's going to be good for me. So oftentimes people get used to living a life that is less than optimum, but it's because it's familiar. That's true. I'm sure you've seen couples fight the same way for years and years and years and wonder, why do they stay together, you know? It's but it's true. because it's familiar and their brain's used to it. So what you're encouraging is for people to dare to do something new to build their brain capacity and ultimately have a happier life, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. So, yeah. um, Bob, thank you so much for being a terrific guest and really, I think, enlightening a lot of people into how they can learn to build their brain skills in a new way through both neurofeedback and critical thinking skills. And you have those, you have training in both those areas. Uh, and Roland, I want to thank you so much for being a part of our program. I see Roland has put a little uh, closing slide here. Ah, many thanks. Many thanks to Bob Kaufman from Lynn and the Difference Makers. Thank you for doing that, Roland. 
And um, if you would like to get in touch with Bob again, you just go to criticalthinkingforsuccess.com. If you want to join us after the broadcast, we'd love to have you. Thank you again for being a part of the Difference Makers. Thank you for making a difference in the world. Your stories are so important. Please continue sharing them and bringing out your positive light into the world. Thank you both. Well, thank, thank you. It's been fun being here. My pleasure. Bye-bye.